countdown. All right, we now we are live, guys. Uh, good to see you. Uh, so, Tom from the Marketer's Toolkit for Go High Level and Chase from High Level here to talk about pipelines and all the awesome stuff that you can do with those. And uh, it may be boring, but uh, I think it's an essential part, as Chase is going to go over, to uh, retaining your clients. And uh, there are some good tips and strategies to go over here. Yeah, yeah. Great intro. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me back. Um, as Tom alluded, we are talking about not a traditionally sexy topic for a webinar, but um, I'm always shocked at how underutilized pipelines are. And so uh, I think Tom and I would agree that they're kind of like a foundational element before you can go on to do some crazier stuff in high level. It's important that you guys understand pipelines, how to use them properly, why do you use pipelines? Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. And if you're ready, Tom, I can kick it off. Yeah, share your screen and I will. Okay, so let me, uh, I want to share a window. All right. Can you see uh, this first slide? Tom? Hold on, let me bounce back. Tom? Yeah, here we are. Let me, sorry about that. This is exactly what ran in, I ran into last time. Okay, so I'm going to stop my video. There you go. Now you can share your, your screen. Every time I share, I can no longer hear you. Let's try again. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, great. So we're going to do And if I, if I do go. and this, I can hear you still. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, cool. And can you see my screen? Yep. I think we're all good to go. All right, great. Let's do it. So um, we are talking about, and you know what? I would love to, let me do this a different way because I like to be able to see the comments as we go. Yeah. So let me pull this out into another yeah, tab. I would love to. Let me do this. And then I can move. This one over here, and let's see. Sorry for the technical uh, delay here, folks. Yeah. Let me do that. All right, here we go. Perfect. That's what I want. Okay, great. Tom, I think I can still hear you. You guys can see yeah. my screen. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, cool. So let's talk about um, pipelines. So first of all, what is a pipeline? Technically, a pipeline is a series of stages that opportunities must pass through in order to achieve a goal state. Now, if you go look up the definition of pipelines, most times you'll see like the definition of a traditional sales pipeline. Pipelines in high level are a little bit different in that we think of them as opportunities that are a little more flexible than like a traditional sale type of pipeline. Um, and let's talk about what I mean by that. But essentially what we're, the first thing to understand is we're mapping stages to success. Except, essentially um, we're going from start to a goal and what happens in between. So why are pipelines important? Um, they're important for a number of reasons. So the first is we can bring order to chaos for our clients. And the second one here is it, it ties right to that. It allows us to visualize the whole funnel. So when you work with clients, you know, we talked about last time, clients think they want leads. Um, they don't know enough yet to know that they actually want bookings, right? And most clients by now have worked with an agency or two before and most agencies don't visualize the funnel right so clients aren't even aware that they're doing funnel marketing mm. even though that's what we do right and so by using a pipeline in high level we then automatically get a funnel report and so what you'll find is that it's often the first time a client has ever seen or thought about their marketing in terms of a funnel. Hmm. And that is an eye-opening experience for clients. 
And before we talk about holes in the bucket, I- I'm going to skip down to uh, the next point here. I have found in my career uh, running an agency that when you visualize the funnel, the process for a client, you often earn partial credit. Like back in elementary school, like if you showed your work, even if you didn't get the right answer, you'd still get credit. That's true in the agency world. I can recall lots of clients that we retained through the normal churn period because they could see what was going on and they understood for the first time, oh, this is a whole process here. And I have faith that these guys are going to get the numbers to where they need to be. But they were happy enough to just be able to see it happening that they were willing to open up the trust and stick around. It's so true. So it adds confidence for sure. Go for it, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, it totally adds confidence and it it makes it so that they uh, are confident that you're going to do it. Um, And just just being able to see it like like just showing them high level a lot of times so this is like probably two years ago um now high level is a lot more prevalent in the marketplace but just showing them high level got them to stick around for three months for us <laughs> like just the yes. fact that high level existed they were like well you guys obviously exactly know what you're doing. you know because if you don't what's the alternative right you you know we talked about it usually takes a couple of weeks to get your first campaign off the ground if you're not using the automated features of high level, like web chat widget, GMB chat to deliver leads right away, they're kind of sitting around for two weeks, getting antsy, thinking, did I make a bad decision paying these guys $2,500 um, or whatever they paid you? And then you launch the first campaign. And then what happens? A week goes by, you send the first numbers over and they're not great, right? The goal was $50 per lead and they're coming in at 100 a lot of clients will bounce right then and there. They're like, I knew this was a bad decision. You know, their spouse is yelling at them. I told you that was a bad idea. And they pull the plug. And that's what leads to churn, right? That's why the average churn rate for the average agency is as bad as it is. But just doing something like this, enabling them to see the process and understand, hey, you know, this is just a step along the way. These numbers are going to improve. Here's all the things that are going to happen can oftentimes be what, gets them in the right mindset of, okay, got it. We're doing something bigger than just like me buying magical lead beans that are supposed to (laughs) fix my business. So, um, but what's most important about a funnel is that it allows us to see holes in the bucket. If we think of a funnel, a pipeline, which is sort of flipped on its side, um, it becomes kind of a funnel bucket, right? It's a funnel. So, If we look at this one over here, and this one isn't like a super drastic example, but this is a funnel that we used for, um, and we weren't goal tracking on this one, which is bad for me to be using this as an example, right? Because it doesn't show anything as one, but it illustrates the point I'm making right now, which is holes in the bucket. So hopefully, I don't know if this is big enough on the screen for you guys to actually see these numbers, but if if you can see the numbers, and I'd love in the chat if you could point it out, where do you think is the hole in this bucket? Oh, hold on. Think of holes in the bucket as, you know, where Sorry, we no. need to focus efforts to improve. So um, can you guys see those? How much are lead beans? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. Let us know in the chat if you can even see those tiny numbers. But if we can... Um, I'd love to pause for just a quick second to see um, if you guys. Okay, cool. Can't see the phone all chasing. Uh, My head is blocking it. Classic. Yeah, I mean, if you see it, there you go. Got it. There you go. That's there you go. That's a little better. Cool. All right. Maybe you guys can see there. Um, Basically, uh, I won't belabor the point, but if we look, we can see here. Okay. 200 people registered, meaning went into the first stage of this pipeline. Of those 200, 84 of them attended the first, uh, this was a a webinar pipeline actually. So they attended the first webinar, 42% of them. Then the second webinar, 63 of people attended, then 52, then 44. So we can see right off the bat some glaring holes, right? We need, 
we had the biggest drop off from registered to attended. So, hey, 200 people registered. Why did only 84 show up for the first webinar? So we could focus attention there. And then we look, okay, there was also a, a pretty big drop off from the first to the second. But look at the numbers after that. They're actually pretty good. After the second, people, the drop off is less severe. So our funnel is showing us that, hey, if we can get more people to the first and second webinars, they're likely to come for all of them. And so that's what funnels do. They show you holes and they, they tell you exactly where you need to go focus time to improve things for your client campaign. So let me move on to the next one here. So creating pipelines is super simple. If you guys haven't built them yet, you click opportunities, you click the pipelines tab, you hit create new. But what's most important is this. Traditional pipelines. If you're building a traditional pipeline, you only want to include positive stages that every opportunity must pass through. Now, in the beginning days of high level, that's how the pipelines were built. And if you included things like a no-show stage, a canceled stage, a whatever stage, your reporting broke, your funnel report was no longer valid. And this example here is an example of a bad pipeline. And again, I don't know if you guys can see what's there, but there are uh, two stages in this pipeline that should not be in a pipeline report. And if anybody can point it out, you'll get the gold star for the day. Um, I'll pause for one quick second, but all right. I, uh, canceled or oh, no, that was for last one. Yep. so Tom yeah 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 you got it so canceled we've got canceled one here and we also have a uh, um, what was the other one here I think purchase I think yeah so while purchase could be a, uh, that could be legit but the main one here is canceled and let's talk about why this is not good this is not good because the way that funnel reports work, if you have a negative stage in your funnel, the, if the negative stage will appear inflated. So in this funnel, there were actually no cancellations. So look, we have the same amount of people showing in the one, the end goal, 18% of the funnel as canceled. And that's because the way funnel reporting works is it goes top down. In order for something to get here, the funnel report assumes it went through every stage along the way. Oh. Because that's how traditional funnels work. See, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Now, yeah. we fix this along the way. This is how it used to be. Like, hey, if you're building a funnel, do not include negative stages. Use statuses for that. But it got to the point where you guys, high levelers, made such a good argument that like, no, 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 we want to be able to include everything, every possible stage for whatever reason. And so we said, OK, we can fix this. And so let's talk about how. You can avoid bad reporting by when you build your pipeline, you hide any negative stages from the report. Sorry. And so <laughs> if I hop into an account real quick and if we go... If we go spin up a new pipeline, you know, we give it a name and then we start adding our stages, right? So like new leads, hot leads, appointment booked, and then no show, right? People love to have a no show stage, but that's a negative. What we can do is just uncheck the reporting icon and it won't factor into our funnel report. Oh, that's awesome. So. If you take nothing else away from today's uh, chat, it's this. Make sure that you're hiding your negative stages from uh, in here in the settings so that when you look at your reports, the numbers are not screwed up. So your negative stages are not inflated. That's awesome. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why the heck would I ever want 
a negative stage two display. Because notice we have two icons here because there are two um, reports on a dashboard, right? We've got the funnel visualization and the pie chart. Well, the answer is some agencies like to see the distribution of all the stages, whether they're positive or negative, right? So you might want to see, okay, you know, how many people ended up being no show or whatever. And the distribution report will show you that. So just keep it in mind when you are building out your um, funnels again to uncheck the negatives so that your funnel report, which is most important again, because this one will show us the leaky holes in our bucket are true. All right, some agencies uh, oh, why? So this is the second one. The other reason that people want to include negative stages is because as of right now, and this will probably be something that we change in the future, every opportunity can have one of these um, statuses, but right now you can't add new ones. So you guys have made a great argument that we should be able to create custom statuses for appointments. Um, and we'll probably that will probably happen someday. But for right now, these are locked, these are fixed. And so you can use instead negative stages in your pipeline to do the same things you would wanna do by creating a custom status for opportunities here. Mm. That makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. So next let's check out the uh, anatomy of an opportunity. And so if we hop into opportunities and let me up into an account that's not real. So we're not looking at real people's information here. <laughs> and we'll check out my man, Claude Giroux. So every opportunity has things that are unique to it. So we've got contact information here, like which contact is this opportunity tied to? And this is all straightforward stuff. But down here, we get things that are specific to the opportunity, right? So the name of this opportunity does not have to be the name of the contact, right? And we have full control over this. Um, we, it shows us obviously which pipeline is this opportunity in, which stage of the pipeline, what's the status. So we just talked about those statuses there. What is the value? This is very important. We'll talk about, let's double back to that in a second. Who is the owner? So do we want to assign this opportunity to a user in this account? And then the source, and the source um, is also important for reporting. So the value is very important, or it can be very important when it comes to reporting. If we have values here, like if I say, and there are two ways to do it, right? When we start, it's typically, hey, client, let's say Dr. Bob, what is the average lifetime value of you know a customer who comes in for cleaning because we're running a campaign to generate you more cleanings right or maybe it's invisalign oh we're running an invisalign campaign what's the average lifetime value of an invisalign customer and they'll say like i don't know i don't know what the real answer to this but let's say it's two thousand dollars and we'd say, okay, great. Every new lead we create in the system is going to have $2,000 because that is what you told us is the average lifetime value. As opposed to the so then when we, transactional cost specifically. Like of the yeah, first so let's talk about that in a second. Yeah. So like if we do that and we come look at our pipeline value or if we go into reporting, it's going to show us a number that's not real, Right. This is like the best case scenario. And some people love doing it that way. Some people don't, right? Because you could say, yeah, no, that's not real. You haven't sold all those people, but you could have sold all these people, right? Mm -hmm. This is the potential value that we generated from our marketing. And it's usually a huge number, right? Because, you know, we don't close every lease. <laughs> the, the value number is way higher than, than what actually ends up getting closed. But it's very impactful to show a client, well, you told me that every one of these is potentially worth $2,000 and look how many of them we brought in mm -hmm. to the system from the wilderness. Um, you can see the potential of what's going on here, right? What, where I'm going with that is you can do it that way or 
you can dynamically update this value. So, you know, this is a more advanced um, usage of high level and folks like Tom can surely show you how to do this. There's help docs on this and stuff, but essentially in workflows, we can change this number based on things that happen. So we can actually create custom, you know, in uh, webinar number six, we're gonna talk about how to do appointment surveys. So we follow up after appointments and we ask our clients to input the value that was sold. And then we can dynamically feed it back here and now our pipeline numbers are real because it's showing the actual amounts that's being sold. And if you can get to that point, then you're showing clients things they've never seen before. They've never had somebody show them what's actually going on with the real numbers. So we're not gonna go into that today, but I wanted to point that out, that this value field is very powerful and you can dynamically update it um, from workflows. And then the same thing from source, you can also dynamically update this from workflows, um, you know, based on conditions and things uh, as well. So we're not going into reporting today, but I did want to point out that these two things, um, all of these actually you can change in workflows, but those two are kind of the most powerful. So also within an opportunity, we can tie it to an appointment. So, you know, if you're, you or your clients, if you're training them to come in here and work the leads, et cetera, they can be booking people right off of the opportunity. We can create tasks related to this opportunity and notes as well. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to step through the anatomy of an opportunity. And we, we also want to point out that we can find people based on everything, the anatomy of an opportunity. So if we go into um, contacts and if we create a filter, we can filter on all of these things. We can find these people, we can save the lists into smart lists based on um, the age of an opportunity. So, hey, show me people who are in this, who have been in this pipeline for more than a month or show me people that are in this specific pipeline or in that specific stage of that pipeline um, or people that are in that pipeline with this specific status. So you can create smart so, lists for each one of the stages so they can work off of the smart lists and they can even call and go through everybody that's in the lost category and follow up with everybody in the lost category and just message them all individually and see, ask them like what happened and something like that. That's a great point. It, like when we go retroactively to do things, we can because people went into a pipeline, right? Imagine, you know, you ran a, I don't know, you ran a, a campaign for a client for three months, you generated whatever, 2000 leads. Um, you know, you lose the client, they come back to you or whatever. Months later, somebody's like, hey, we want to go market to all those leads that didn't close. Mm hmm what would you do? <laughs> How would you know who yeah. those people were, you know, whether or not they were a good leader or a bad leader, et cetera. But if we use pipelines, we can then easily go find people. We can figure out where they last were. We can target, you know, certain people versus others. Um, but what's important is again, we need to be feeding people into pipelines. We need to be visualizing this process. Um, otherwise it's just, again, it's just chaos. We're just, you know, cramming people into a CRM and, and not really um, leveraging what's possible. So it's important to know uh, that you can go find these folks. And more importantly, in workflows, like we just talked about, we can action off of pipelines and the anatomy of opportunities, right? So we can um, trigger off of things. So we can say, hey, if, you know, someone gets added to a pipeline, go do these things. If someone gets moved from one specific stage to another in a pipeline, I wanna go do some things. Hey, if the status of an opportunity in a pipeline becomes one, maybe I wanna send a review request, or maybe if it becomes lost, I wanna add them to a nurture campaign. Um, there's even stale opportunity triggers. So, hey, if any opportunity sits in this specific stage of a pipeline for more than, let's say, 14 days, I want to 
trigger things. I want to add them to a different nurture campaign. I want to notify somebody. I want to create a manual call action for somebody. Whatever it may be, we can do all of these things if we have a pipeline and we're feeding all of our leads into them. We can also, so those are like the input triggers of a, a workflow. Those are the things that can kick a series of actions off. Now let's talk about what the actions that we can kick off are, right? Within a workflow, we can do things like add or update opportunities, right? We could feed somebody into a pipeline. We could change the pipeline that they're in. We can move them between stages automatically. We can change their status automatically. We can update the value like we talked about before. We can update the source. We can even remove opportunities. So once you start working with pipelines, it becomes kind of magical for your clients because you're like, whoa, okay. Well, every day I log in, I can see how many new leads you guys generated. And then you guys have these automations running that are getting people to book appointments automatically and they just magically move to the appointment book stage. <laughs> like, yeah, and awesome. then, you know, you, you train them, especially when we get to webinar uh, number six, where we're talking about the follow-up surveys, you know, one of the dispositions. So imagine this, like, I won't go too far into it, but basically let's say I'm the dentist, right? And I just had an appointment with Tom. Maybe a half an hour after my appointment, I get an email that says, you know, hey, Dr. Chase, how was that appointment with Tom Bristol? And I have trigger links in there for all the options. The first one might be Tom didn't show up. If I click that, I can move Tom in a pipeline. I can add him to an automation that's going to start sending him texts and emails saying, hey, sorry, you couldn't make your appointment. Let's get you rescheduled, right? I can do things like that. Let's say one trigger link is Tom showed up, but he didn't pay for anything. Tom showed up and he was kind of scared. He was just asking questions and he left. Okay, we're going to move him out of the pipeline or we're going to you know, add him to a workflow that's going to start sending him nurture content. And then we'll, most importantly, we'll have a trigger link that says, you know, Tom showed up and paid. So we quickly redirect me, the doctor, to a form that has Tom's name, email, and a monetary field that says, how much did Tom pay? All I have to do is type in the amount and then hit submit and then boom, I'm going to move in the pipeline. I'm going to, my status is going to turn to one. The value gets input into the opportunity. So my pipeline numbers are real. My reporting numbers become real. I can feed that value back to Facebook. So now my Facebook reporting is real and all of that stuff happens because I have you in the system. I have you in the pipeline. Um, I'm organized my funnel campaign. And so, you know, that'll be a great webinar in itself when we get there. But again, it starts with the foundational stuff of online booking, right? You've got to be using calendars and pipelines. We've got to be providing stages to the funnel so that we can see where everybody is at. Now, pipeline bonus usage. This is cool. So for a long time, an opportunity in a pipeline had to be tied to a contact. And then we changed that. So now that's no longer true. You can just go create an opportunity and just give it a name, which enables you to do basic uh, Kanban type of stuff. So if you guys really? have ever used something like Trello, uh, it's a very basic Trello, right? So if you're like, hey, I just need some lightweight project management software, you can actually use pipelines for that, right? So wow. let's say it's something like this, right? Like ideas to do in progress testing done or whatever. We can just create opportunities and use that um, as a Kanban board to track our progress. And when we combine it with things like tasks and reminders using workflows, we actually get a little power there. Like, I'm not going to tell you, hey, you can, you know, you can go scrap Trello because you can use pipelines yeah. instead. It obviously doesn't have all those features. But if you just need some basic like project management type of stuff, you can absolutely use pipelines uh, for that purpose. And... What's interesting is we use this a lot for all sorts of things. For example, we have, we're building a new team and I have a new team member starting next week to handle pre-trial folks for high level, right? People who are, hey, I heard about high level. Uh, I have some questions. So 
I'm going to create a very basic pipeline and I'm going to teach this team member, hey, every time you interact with somebody, you know, get their information and then apply a tag to them. And that tag will put them into the pipeline. And then I'm going to build some automation, some workflows that, you know, will wait a certain amount of time and then check to see if they opened a trial or not. And if they did, it's going to move them to the trial stage of the pipeline. And then it'll wait longer to see if they paid and it will move them again. But once I have that set up, I'm going to have a funnel report, a beautiful funnel report, right? And it's going to show me, hey, a thousand people got tagged with uh, pre-trial. Uh, 600 of them actually opened a trial and it'll show me that conversion rate, right? And I will know how well this staff member is doing instantly. I can go look at that funnel report whenever I want. So, you know, we often, we often think about things as, as client campaigns, you know, like offer claim, book something, da, 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 da. But man, we use pipelines for all sorts of stuff because it's just a really great way to track the progress of initiatives that you might have going on uh, within your own agency. And so Kanban board is kind of a cool uh, offshoot of that. So that's all I have uh, for the presentation, but I'm sure we've got some questions going on. So let me kill my screen yeah. share here. There you go. And let me move this screen back over here. And Tom, I don't know. Oop, did we cover that. any of these? Can we, a lot of people asking to kill my head, which is an interesting. Yeah, one. sorry about that. We'll use Zoom next time, guys. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I was going to show something cool, actually. If, if it loads. Go for it. Yeah, I'm sure Tom has all sorts of cool add-ons too <laughs> to show yeah, off as well. Yeah. So, so with the pipelines, we have a couple things coming out here in in a little bit here. I'm just waiting for pipeline to load. But in the meantime, guys, if you have any questions about pipelines, put them in the chat here so we can go through it. I'm looking through. So Angie asked a good question. I should probably have showed it. So if you want me to share my screen real quick again, I could do that while you're loading up. Yeah, sure. What you want to show off, Tom. Let me screen share this. Okay. So when I talked about the, the lead, the value and the source fields being dynamically updated, that happens in workflows, right? So if we come into a workflow real quick and I'll just jump into any, any workflow here. At any point in a flow, we could say, okay, I want to add or update an opportunity. So here it gives me all those fields from the anatomy of the opportunity, right? So if I don't change anything, like let's say I leave the, I don't select a pipeline. Well, that means the opportunity will stay in the same pipeline. If I don't change the stage, it will stay in, at the same stage it's in. But let's say I did input a value here, right? So let's say I went and I grabbed that custom um, monetary field that I created uh, that was my purchase amount. Well, if I throw that in there, then that's the only thing it's going to go change about that opportunity. But if I know I got a purchase amount, that means that a sale happened. So I probably also want to change the status to one at the same time. So anytime a lead hits this stage, it's going to go find a corresponding opportunity for the lead and it's going to imprint that dollar amount and it's going to change the status to one. And so this is the way that we dynamically update opportunities so things move in our pipelines and, and things like that. Um, Very cool. So let me show you guys what I was trying to pull up here. Chase, I got to hide up. There we go. Let me share this here. All right. So we lost Chase, but I think he'll be back in a sec. Um, so I was just going to show you guys the uh, collapse pipelines feature. Um, most know about it, but it still what we recently launched was the ability to retain the pipeline value in there. So thought that was pretty cool. So let's take a look here. 
at, oh yes, there you are. Great. And Chase is back. Okay, so I think uh, this is not the intuitive streaming platform I thought it was. So, um, Chase, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Oh, great. Yeah, good. Cool. So, if we, do we have any other questions here? I mean, pipelines are pretty <clears throat> straightforward, but there was like two or three really gold tips that you there that you just gave us about. Uh, I hope so. I'm glad because yeah. again, I feel like pipelines go underutilized and, um, and I, I promise you, if you're not using them, when you start, you're, you will see the difference. You'll see the impact it has on your clients because yeah. again, odds are they've never seen a funnel. They don't know. They're not thinking in terms of a funnel. Yeah. And I feel like if, if you really take the time to implement pipelines fully in your account, you're going to level up as an agency and you're going to find all the holes in your own marketing that you're having problems with. You're going to have more visual of to what's happening actually in the business itself. And they're going to value you more as like a business consultant and, and like knowing how their system works even more than, than they do. Right. And so mm -hmm. it, I think it's, important even in just learning about the business to like put that down. And the more you do that, the more you're going to, like I said, level up as a marketer and your knowledge is going to be like the next guy you close or like just doing a demo, showing them the pipeline, mm -hmm. they'll see the stages and they'll be like, well, yeah, that makes sense. That's my industry right there. You know what, what's happening. Like you show, if you show them a software platform that, is really in tune with their business. It's like you sell them like that. It's like sold, especially yeah. when it's it's better than what they have currently going on in their mind, right? Like your totally. levels up as well as the software. It's like both at the same time, especially if you created that software and you sort of like mastermind the architecture. Even though, even if you told said them told them that it was high level. It's like your knowledge of the industry shown inside of high level on top of all of that. And once you start using them, you, you start thinking about them with everything that you do, right? Everything becomes trackable. And so like, here's an interesting example. Let's say uh, we used to work with a lot of med spas and they used to love to put on these in-person events, right? They would have like a champagne and hors d'oeuvre party. Right. So it's like, hey, we're going to we're going to talk about cool sculpting on this date and time, register to come hang out, have some champagne, have some, you know, we're going to have like a strawberry chocolate fountain thing and and all this stuff. And we're going to, you know, talk about cool sculpting. You guys can ask any questions you want and then they sell you at the event. Right. Well, when you use a funnel, you can do cool things like, OK, uh, you know, we ran an ad, we spent this much money on it or whatever. We had this many people register and then we made a workflow automation to send them reminders leading up to the event, right? And the last one was a text message that went out five minutes before that says, hey, when you get here, please reply to this message with here or I'm here or whatever. And then we triggered off of that to move people in the pipeline to the showed stage. I was attending. Awesome. So now we're reporting, you know, okay, we, re we spent this much money. We got this many people to register. We got this many people to show up without having like count heads at the event or things like that, right? And so once you get in the mindset of funnels, you start applying it to everything and everything becomes so much more measurable and clear. And again, those holes become drastic. You're like, holy smokes, like 200 people registered, but only 30 showed up. We need to look at, you know, this nurture process. What can we do better here? We need to look at the offer. Like, why did so many people say they wanted it, but then didn't do the thing? And so it just gives you very clear opportunities. And again, think about it. Without the funnel, that client would say, this isn't working. I'm out. But with a funnel, they might say, oh, wow, we, you guys did a really great job of getting 200 people to register we just need to figure out why they're not showing up, but we can figure that out. And now you're working together with them. They're still paying you <laughs> because you're helping them improve their business, right? They get out of the mindset of magic beans and they get into the mindset of, oh, like we're making progress here. 
And so, again, if you're not using pipelines, hopefully you start because it will start to be light bulbs going off left and right of like, holy smokes, we can use this for all sorts of stuff. And it will just help you improve across the board. Yeah, that's genius. Jeff like had an interesting... Go ahead. No, no, it's just the first step in analyzing any business and in analyzing any flow is you have to actually have the flow there. So, Absolutely. And yeah. yeah, and when you start to break it down with like KPIs along the way, it gets very interesting. Like the more you yeah. get granular, like that webinar one. Oh, wow. Like, you know, look at the drop off between one and two, but like not much drop off after two, three, four. So yeah. our goal is to get you to two. Because we know if we get you to two, you're likely to stay for the whole thing, right? And so, you know, it just becomes super clear. So yeah. Jeff asked when organizing, oh, there we go. Oh, that's cool. Uh, should they be organized to match pipeline stages? Should they be organized by the action? I think that's pretty subjective, Jeff. Um, it'd be totally up to you. When I think about how I organize workflows, it, it really depends. So I could see making a case for either way. It's kind of whatever works best for you. All right, let's find something else to comment on here. Uh, what's this? With, uh, can I Facebook show Facebook user. Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right, let's see how big this goes. Oh, it's not that, doesn't really work that way, but. Oh, it's gonna ah. scroll. Ah, nice. Has there been a discussion about high level pulling the lifetime value from the lead's final value? and dividing that by the closing one percentage of that specific stage. Example, client closes 10% of the leads in the contacted stage. So if I have a value of 1,000 and I have 10 leads at that stage, Oh, like that's close interesting. Rate, the close rate and it's dividing it so that then you have a reporting of like, your, you, since your close rate is this percentage, and we have this many people in the pipeline, you will be making this much money this month type idea. Like this is your estimate. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. And there's, if you're, you might see this right now, if you're assigning the opportunities to people and you go to the user report, which is a feature in pro plan, pro plan only, there are like closing percentages and sales velocity percentages and things like that in there. Um, which might get you the data that you're after, David, but I see what you're saying. Because right now the funnel report just shows you the total value of all the opportunities that went through that stage. Um, but that's an interesting suggestion. So yeah, I would add that to the opportunities board if it's not there already. Because um, I can yeah. see that being something that we get to at some point. I don't know if it's on the roadmap already or not. And if we're just taking the the close rate that they like have that you guys already have in the like the percentage rate that they've been closing, well, that doesn't totally work because it's going to include the amount that's currently in the pipeline, right? Like, do you know how the mm -hmm. the pipeline stage? You know that the close percentage rate that's on the right hand side of that pipeline on the dashboard. Mm -hmm. How does that number mm -hmm. get calculated? That's like number of one versus like just in the in that particular date range right like one divided by yeah. the number so it's like exactly it's gonna, like i was thinking of taking that number and dividing it um but it could because i was thinking how i could do it because i can i can math i can like put an extra oh now in. we're talking tom could probably make this yeah. happen yeah yeah so like, on it, like, and I'm sure i guess you could put like a custom value with their one percentage and then i could put a report above each pipeline that shows you that um anyway that's me just thinking there. Um, well, Wizard Jeff has another request for your okay, wizardry great. here. Okay, great. Let's see. He likes pipelines and he loves Kanban, but he hates using pipelines for Kanban. Tom, can't you whip up a solution that creates a customizable Kanban boards for tasks? Oh, yeah. I think the, the tasks area is just going to be completely overhauled because there's... Yeah, so much it will needs to have happen and and it's really hard to to use the tasks or even hack the tasks to make them super workable at the moment it's funny tasks are definitely sort of a bastard child at this stage in the game um i know there are improvements in the roadmap for tasks right now but my secret sense is that someday 
after all of the current feature sets have really kind of leveled up to where we want to get them, I feel like we're going to be forced to just like, why wouldn't we start building out task management um, yeah. and take that up to another level? But it's not, you know, like I said, there are, I know there are improvements for tasks in the roadmap now that are being worked on, um, but uh, there are no plans currently to like go compete with ClickUp or somebody. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's but not, who knows? It's not, Maybe someday. It's not a major money maker. It's not like the reason why people sign up for high level is task management. They're they're signing up for the automation, right. and all of the other cool stuff, and social media is way more of a draw than task management at the moment because mm -hmm. of just like we were saying, like you're not going to compete with ClickUp right now. Like that's not your strength. No, absolutely yeah. not. But um, we social media. I mean, we have some time, and and I don't know if we talked about where we're going with social media have we uh, no not, not, not recently okay cool i see david has another question is there a way to allow a trigger to fire from a completed task so it moves in the pipeline i would uh, love that i've been looking i've not been able to people have been asking me about that i, I haven't seen it in workflows at all because it's not yeah let me see a contact and there's no right. way to, no the only no, task is just to add task. a task yeah exactly no but that's a good one and i'm sure that's in the what's being worked on now because that's like a no-brainer yeah totally yeah um so, so you mentioned social, social media social posting media. Yeah. yeah yeah so i'll give you i'll give you guys the inside scoop so social media posting is is getting very close um to launching and at first it will just kind of be um, basic posting and then being able to schedule the posts with approval flows and all that, which is great, right? So like it'll it'll become just a great scheduler poster. But the conversations that I've been sitting in on lately that are really exciting is for like you know Q three ish, Q four ish, where eventually we're gonna get to a place where you'll be able to go to the media library and upload things and there will be a new media type called social post. Oh. So it'll ask you for the title, the post copy, and then the media. That'll go into the library into snapshots, which will enable you guys to do things like, hey, we have 365 days worth of content for a med spa. It gets loaded automatically in the snapshot. And if you toggle it on, like start auto posting, They'll just start posting like one a day. Like, so basically you guys are going to be able to build libraries of content that you can scalably deploy via snapshots and, or maybe sell them to your clients or whatever, but it's going to be like social media on steroids for agencies where it's not just a tool that somebody can manually use, but it's something that you guys can really scale as a product. That is genius because and, the way that we do this currently in our agency we manually, not manually, but we like, we post to all of our clients and schedule it all out at the same time using a tool, right? And so that's what I was going to mm -hmm. suggest. And I've talked to Sean about this, where we needed a way to basically post to everybody from like a sort of the agency area, as opposed to going into each account mm -hmm. and posting it. But um, I don't you know if that's on the roadmap better. yet. But what you, what you described, but, is yeah. because I, the other thing I was telling him about was the, the key uh, to really making it sticky as a software is giving those social posts to the client themselves so that they can post it and manually edit it and all that stuff. So that sounds like you guys exactly. found, found the solution to that. I showed Sean a um, competitor in the dental industry that is just ruling like they just the only thing they did was made a library of social media posts and they are selling it for 300 bucks a month and they've been doing this for years and they've got it's they're a huge company now it's like they're called my social practice totally if you want to look at it anyway i showed that to sean he was like oh my gosh and so that's i think where this is all coming it's a it's a great opportunity and i i i I need to talk to the product manager on this so that I can get my story straight. So I'll just give you a very big teaser here. What I heard and what I saw in a screenshot 
is something about a Canva integration so that the media itself could possibly be a Canva template that could be edited ah, in app. That's So awesome. th that would be amazing, right? Because then your clients would be like, oh, I have 365 posts here and I can actually change the background color to match my brand, yeah. um, which would be and really interesting. Value, I don't know. The value, the, I, this is what I was, I was telling Sean about this. I was like, it's a super simple ad, right? So like all you yeah. guys have to do is like integrate. They've got an awesome platform that you can just add in. And the client has all of the impressiveness of the fact that they have a freaking Canva inside of high level or their, your platform as well as yeah. all of the billion things that you can do that have been adapted for their specific setup. Yeah, Pooja, she's one of our newer product managers actually, and she's the one that's been running social media, um, doing a great job. And when I saw that in there, I was like, no way, like, is, are we really gonna do that? And Sean was like, oh yeah, Pooja's got a plan for it and everything. I'm like, oh my oh, goodness. Man. So I haven't gotten the full scoop, but I, mm. I saw it in a mock-up and I was like, wait a minute, because that would be really, really cool. So yeah, we're super, super excited about social media. It's definitely gonna be a massive feature uh, for this for you guys this year. Um, oh, nice. Somebody met with Pooja and went over Publer. Okay. What uh -huh. they're missing is to pull the social pages into the platform to facilitate comments and replies. Got it. Uh, Interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a big thing, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Know. Yeah, we All need right. that as well. And whoever was asking about my reputation management snapshot, yes, it'll have pipeline stages for each one of those uh, there. So. Awesome. Well, well thanks for having me back, guys. Um, yeah. I hope, I, I hope, I hope that if you're not using pipelines, you go start because I promise you, you'll be thrilled about the reaction you get for your clients, and it will help retain them. I promise you. Um, show nice. them what's going on, and they will respect you for it.